I think if any of us try to imagine what it would be like to move to a new country and in one year learn a new language, a new alphabet, and completely new cultural norms and find employment to support our family, it would be a bit of an overwhelming uh, task. Privately sponsored refugees arrive to a dedicated social network of volunteers who help them um, with all aspects of integration during their first year. And in my experience, it often doesn't take a great deal, really just a willingness to give your time. It doesn't necessarily require expertise, it's just about working with other people to help people. I put out a Facebook post asking who wants to sponsor a refugee family with me. By the time everybody, you know, all was said and done, there was a core group of about 10 people that stayed. And everyone does amazing work and everyone has slightly different roles. But I absolutely knew whatever else I was going to do, I wanted to be at the airport holding up a big sign uh, and, and a big smile. When the family first arrived, we talked about what the year was going to look like and what was going to happen financially, um, what our commitment was. There was not a whole lot of information that they had before they arrived of exactly what a sponsor was or how this arrangement was going to work. It's like you have 20 or 15 person. Each person have his connection and each person said, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. So like we came weak. We don't know anything uh, here. So, and they make us strong. As happy and excited and proud and grateful as they are to be here, well, no one chooses to be a refugee. This family has come here and been confronted with so much that is, is completely out of their uh, realm of experience that surely I can deal with the few things that I might find uncomfortable or different or strange in, in their family. We went to the grocery store together and he said in Syria, a man and a woman who weren't married could never go to the grocery store together. So there's all these little things that he will point out that are different that, you know, never occurred to me. For some, it's okay to have the hug or whatever. Uh, for some, it's not. Even the shake, shaking hand is, you know, debatable. So what, what we advise is like, you know, don't take the initiative, just wait if, for people. Just follow the greeting. It's just knowing what the family is having to adjust to and trying to step back enough to give them a sense of their you know, independence and decision making and to allow them to kind of settle in the way that they choose. It didn't occur to anybody that, that physically, furniture wise and the layout of a house and how people live together would be that much different than what we did here. Uh, they came and said, eh, we'd like to have Syrian seating. <laughs> and I was like, oh, because I didn't even know what it was, you know. When I came here, I didn't speak English. So we had a party here and they all come to talk to me. I don't know what they said. <laughs> That's the thing. And when I went to school, I didn't speak English. Oh, that the kids, they come, the, my friends, they come to me and, hi, how are you? I'm just, yes, thank you. <laughs> That's it. I think that translation at the beginning is important. But after that, definitely, the sponsors have to emphasize the importance of taking, taking language classes. And we know from many studies and from Canada's history of immigration and with refugees coming into the country that success happens when they learn English. They used to take me every morning to either a job center or to a community center or uh, doing a French test, you know, or English test, whatever. I, I feel they have been very supportive, very friendly. Most refugee newcomers uh, state that one of the number one stressors during their first year is how are they going to find employment. None of them want to leave under, you know, handout from the government. They want to work. So if they don't find uh, employment, I think there will be other social problem attached to that because within the home and, and so on because of the frustration. And After one year, um, I feel like I, I must to give back to other new Syrian family. So now when I see uh, uh, a Syrian family, um, just I go directly to them. I said, 
I can help you with this. I think the more we work together and create these kind of innovative models to accelerate newcomer integration, the more it benefits all of us. There's nothing that we do or ask them to do that is too difficult for them and they're all always so grateful. It's like having more members in your family. So yes, we do protect refugees, but actually what happens in that relationship is that we become educated, we become transformed, we begin to understand and encounter things outside of ourselves that we could never have imagined. It has been a, a positive experience for sure. I think it's probably the best thing I've ever done. If anybody wants to do this, don't overthink it. Yes. Don't overthink it, just do it. And don't fight with your group members. <laughs> Nothing is worth fighting about. I have one regret. One regret. My regret is that I didn't do it earlier. <laughs>